guys, Vane here. So it's a gorgeous day outside. I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold, so my voice might be a little bit off, but it was just so beautiful. And I've been wanting to do a video with a walk around of the bug. I just couldn't resist. So I've been getting a lot of questions about the paint job, about my seats. I think that's probably the biggest question is about my seats. So I wanted to do a little bit of a close up and just show you why I love my beetle. So a lot of people have asked about the patina on the bug. It's not real, it's like a faux patina. I love the whole hood ride style. Um, I just kind of happened to stumble upon this bug and I was like, all right, this is cool, let's do it. So I wanted to make it personalized and make it look how I like it. So I actually used a DA sander and I sanded it all the way down to the bare metal. And then thanks to YouTube, I found a mixture and if I remember correctly, it was peroxide, salt, and ammonia? What was it? I think ammonia or something like that. I don't even remember to be honest. But once you spray that mixture onto the bare metal, literally within seconds, it just um, rusts right over. You just see the rust like growing, which I'm sure a lot of you think I'm crazy for making my bug rusty, which it probably is, but it's what I like. After I sanded it down, sprayed it with the mixture, I drove it for like a month or so, just bare, let it weather. As you can see, I don't even have a garage, so it's outside all the time. And then after about a month or so, I actually had a flat clear sprayed over the top to protect it because ultimately I didn't want to ruin the car. I really like it, it kind of gives this really cool like sheen look to it. It's how I got the patina look. Sometimes people think it's real. I get a ton of questions. When are you gonna paint it? Are you gonna paint it? I'm almost like tempted to let her, I'm not gonna paint this or no, I'm not painting this, but that's okay. I like when people talk to me about the bug. Right now I have BRM rims on the bug. Um, I've got narrow tires in the front, a little bit wider in the back. My next step is to get a narrow beam, hopefully this summer, so I can lower the front a little bit more. Um, it also has drop spindles, which gives it a nice stance, but I really want it to get a little bit lower. In the back, the torsion bars have been adjusted one click down, and I think it's like perfect. I'm not really a big fan of camber, but it, it gives it just a little bit. It's like, I love it. I love how it turned out. I couldn't have asked for a better um, stance in the back. Let's check out the inside. I actually have a complete custom stereo done by Sounds So Good Audio in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. They do amazing work. When I dropped the bug off there, I was like, it's in your hands, you can do whatever you want. I don't care, it's up to you. And it was a total surprise and I love what he did with it. I honestly did not think you would be able to get that much sound out of a beetle. It sounds amazing. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to capture that on video, but it's impressive. Uh, last summer I was at a car show and somebody wanted to hear it. And I try not to really show it off, especially at car shows, usually you're you know, advised not to have loud radios. Um, but I was like, okay, for just a minute, I'll turn it on really quick for you. So I turned it on, and anytime I turn it on, it's like, woo, like a, just a crowd forms. And after I turn it off, I remember somebody saying like, what was that, who was that? And they're like, oh, that's that beetle over there. And you look at it, it's like this rusty beetle and you don't expect it at all, so it's kind of fun. Here are my custom panels um, that he did. I have a handmade longboard, so he kind of went with the style of the longboard um, when he made this wood here, because I take the longboard to shows with me just for fun. The material here is off of vintage Marshall amps, which I thought was a really cool touch. He put in speakers down here in the kickboard, and then we've got an uh, 8 inch subwoofer on each side there. And he actually saved me some room underneath, so I have a little bit of storage underneath there. This is just my coffee bag seat cover that I made. I just got it from an art store. I love coffee, so I just thought it was super cool. It's actually a real coffee bag. When I was cutting it apart to make the seat cover, there were green coffee beans or unroasted coffee beans that were falling out. Well, back to my radio, um, I wanted to keep the look of the stock radio or the original radio. It does still work. It only plays AM radio here. So I asked, uh, my one request was to make the radio in the glove box. So it's hidden away there. So this is my glove box. I hand lettered and I painted the Great Wave of Kanagawa on there. The glove box is this what idol. It's Japanese for sky blue. It's a little bit of a tribute to the color of the car, obviously, but also a little bit of the story behind the car. When it came time to buy the, the bug, um, I had basically an option to go to Japan or to buy the Beatles. I had to decide, you know, Japan, it's on my bucket list, I really want to go there, 
but also I really want to have another bug. And obviously you can see what I chose. So other than the door panels and like the stereo, the interior is pretty much stock. I did have to replace the sun visors here. I ordered these from Bug Stuff in Pennsylvania and that was really nice. Hey, this one even has a fancy little mirror. The old ones were so dry rotted, I couldn't, every time I folded it down, there was a crack, like stuff from the inside would just sprinkle like magic dust down. Um, <laughs> There's the one hole in the headliner and it would be perfect if it wasn't for that. That hole was actually there when I bought the Beetle. The owner I bought it from said uh, one day they were moving some stuff or something in the Beetle, I think a box, and a friend was helping them and when he went to set it back there, the top of the box like hit the headliner and snagged a hole and it was like, oh. I kind of thought about patching it up, I'm not really sure what to do with it. Um, I don't want to replace the whole headliner because it's in good condition. I just kind of like the fact it's original. So I just leave it, it flaps around in the wind, waves at people when I drive by. Just kidding. So let's check out under the hood. <laughs> All right. So here's a spare, obviously. And it's like a different size than any of the tires on my car. This isn't even hooked up for the windshield wiper fluid, but leave it in there. Extra oil. This is like my little tool kit slash couple of spare parts. Um, and then one of my friends laughs at me for this because there is so much random tools in here. I'm sure some of them don't even wouldn't even work on the bug, but I just carry it all. You never know what you might need. If you can see here lingering in the background, there's all my power for my stereo. Now wait till you guys see this engine compartment. It's gonna blow your mind. You're just not even gonna believe it. Here's a little pinstripe design I did on the back. Whoa, look at that. It's so dirty. Yep, so it's a stock 1600 engine with dual Solex carbs. Very dirty. So that's just a sign that I drive a lot. <laughs> I drive it too much to worry about it being clean. So I've got some news. I finally, after about two years, broke down and bought another vehicle. I'm no longer driving the Beetle every single day. I will say it's like a almost daily. I'm just so glad to be able to get it off of the roads, out of the salt, because every time I drove it after it snowed or it put pre-treatment down, I was like, oh, I want to preserve this vehicle. I don't like driving it in this crap. Um, so on really cold days or nasty weather, I'm able to drive this beauty in the background. That's a little tour of the Beetle. So uh, if I miss anything that you guys are curious about or have any questions, please leave a comment below.